All right, what I got here is a Bobcat cylinder, uh, and I believe this is a tilt cylinder. I know I've done a video on this before, but we're gonna do another one, and all these are a little bit different in their own way sometimes, so if you like this sort of thing, if you would, go down there, click the subscribe, turn the bell on for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. I noticed about 95% of you guys uh, watching these videos are not subscribed, so please consider going down there and clicking that subscribe. All right, first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get, this has got spanner holes on the face and kinda on the side, cause it's cut through. So I've got a smaller uh, Williams 482 spanner wrench, uh, which unfortunately has been modified sides ground down and the pins have been ground down so we'll see if this will break at least first if not i'll have to get another one and surprisingly that broke loose pretty easily so we'll just go ahead and we'll just sit here and spin this all the way out get it to where it's hand loose finish turning it out by hand that's loose now we'll go ahead and Pull that out, pull the rod out, set the rod to the side, check the inside of the tube, which everything looks good in there. We may hit a, we'll take a wire wheel on the die grinder and hit that real quick just to clean that up. I got my rag here, I'll stuff that a little bit so I can keep from having any crap go in. Take my wire wheel and clean this. <laughs> Okay, so I took wire wheel, clean that. Don't forget to get your rag out. Wipe the tube down. And that's it for the tube for right now. I'm gonna take the tube out, sit it to the side. I grab the rod, put it right there. And uh, we'll get a, looks like a 15 sixteenths. Okay, I got a 15 sixteenths socket. Um, I got my half inch drive impact. Uh, Thor 1894, not sponsored. This is a really good half inch drive uh, air impact. And uh, we're gonna take piston nut off. So put that on there and take the piston nut off. Okay, now we're gonna take the piston off. And this piston has a chamfer on this top side so be sure that that goes on that way when you take it off this going back to the top towards the gland take our gland off and that's it for taking it apart we'll go ahead and get our pick we'll take the seals off of the gland take the o-ring off the outside take the back up off And then there's a, another O-ring here at the very top. We'll get under it, take it off. We'll take the uh, we'll take the wiper here out. Has some very soft seals. Take the wiper out and the u-cup which this u-cup on the inside is split right there as you can see in that one spot so that's the failure point as you've noticed with a lot of these cylinders we reseal um, this is the main main uh, seal that goes bad and this one actually has a metal spring in the bottom side so this is similar to like a uh, a loaded u-cup it'll have an o-ring in this groove and they call this when it's got something in the groove it's considered a loaded u-cup and then without it it's considered unloaded so this is basically holding low sealing pressure against the uh, gland and the rod. It's just an added measure to aid in sealing, if that makes sense. Okay, we got our seals out of our gland. Now I get our piston seal off. Of 
basically you just gotta on these teflons you guys just gotta usually dig and cut until they come out and this pick is bad i gotta find my good pick remove the teflon seal and then there's an expander underneath take the expander out and that's it for the seals like i said this is off of a bobcat and a lot of times when you see these these brown in color o-rings like this here has um, these are usually a uh, what they call a viton material they're made for higher pressures and uh, more specialized fluids but they also cost a lot more and that's possibly why a lot of these bobcat silk kits cost a lot which they use really good o-rings and stuff yet they use aluminum glands inside of a steel tube which over time I've seen it more often than not these get corroded and these spanner holes do not work you have to there's no way around it the cylinder has to come apart and you have to put a pipe wrench on this lip and even in doing that it'll they'll be chewed up and then I mean you gotta you gotta replace the gland a lot of times uh, it's unfortunate but that's how they're made aluminum and steel doesn't mix well whenever whenever they're together over time and they get oxidized and all that but if that makes sense okay we'll go ahead and clean this gland up yeah i usually just use a rag uh, in this case this one is pretty clean so we can get by with just using a rag to clean all this stuff up in here and there is some scarring if you can see it right here uh, on this gland this being aluminum you'll have that but uh, that glands clean and the piston is clean so we can uh, throw our old seals away okay and we got our new seals here we'll start off with uh, the outside first this gland measures uh, I don't know if you how well you can see it there I need to get a better better rule so you guys can see maybe see it right there one and three quarter roughly um, but this is a one and three quarter inch bore or actually one and three quarter inch outside diameter on this so you want to be sure you get a one and three quarter OD um, o-ring with the back up and the height on that is the height on this is an eighth inch so that means a one and three quarter o-ring with eighth inch height is going to be one and a half on the id so this one i don't know that i've used one of these before but this is a backup it does not have the concave on either side um, so this can go on either direction we'll put it on first basically put it on and then roll it around until it lays flat like so we'll take and put our o-ring on next now our u-cup this rod measures this is saying 1.128 which let's see what we get here 1.12223 1 this is this should be about 1.125 because this is an inch and an eighth rod so i got my u-cup and we'll put it in i might actually need the seal tool I'll actually show you I'll get it and show you okay I got my seal installation tool here uh, for the u-cup I don't remember if I've used these or not but um, basically that goes in the tool like this and then whenever you take it it 
it deforms that U cup like so and then it allows you to go down into which you, you'll have to mess with it a little bit but it allows you to get that U cup down into the groove like so release hold on to your U cup with your thumb pull the tool out and then you're left you're left with that there then you can basically take and that goes in just like that some of these newer U cups are stiff and that tool aids in you know just install on your your seal and I failed to measure that out so I failed to measure that one out for you so that will like I said was an this is the old one that was an inch and an eighth rod so inch and an eighth ID by one and a half on the OD three eighths on the height so you go with your cross section first on the U cups. That measures 3 sixteenths on the width. So the back of my scale here, 3 sixteenths, is 0.187. So we need a 1870 for the first set of numbers because that represents the cross section. The ID was an inch and an eighth. So inch and an eighth in a decimal form is 1.125. So we take that decimal away and our middle number or our second number is 1125 and then our last number is our height and the decimal for 3 eighths of an inch is 0.375 so we need a 1870 1125 375 and that's what our U cup in there was okay now time for our wiper this is an ST or a D profile so looking at our old one with the uh, the cutaway that's what that profile looks like this is also similar to a 959 but the base on a 959 is not as thick as what a uh, ST is and this is also an inch and an eighth ID and this measures inch and a half on the OD and this base height is right at looks about 3 sixteenths or so which is what this is so we'll go ahead and put our wiper in start one side and just push that's not seated all the way so we can take I'll generally take my scale or something and just push on that until it seats all the way and I forgot to mention on the U cup that inner lip that lip seal that lip faces towards the bottom it faces towards the pressure so if you can see if you can see in there the bottom of that seal the bottom of that seal is where that lip is and I almost forgot too the o-ring we gotta put our o-ring on for the top of the gland there do not forget that and the glands done now our piston seal this was an inch and three quarter bore. This is a 1400 style or uh, it's also known as a square profile for the uh, main seal. So we put our expander on. This is actually a PS 1400-28. 28 represents the size which is that inch and three quarter. And then uh, we'll take and once our expander's on we'll put our uh, main seal on. Get it started on that step and just start walking around. And that's deformed, so I'm gonna have to use the seal clasper to shrink that piston seal back down. Got my seal clasper, and I'll take and run that down and give that a snug and let that compress real quick. In the meantime, I'll take some grease, which I need to get some more. Grease the inside of the seals. Then I'll take, put, put it on the rod. Just like that. Wipe our grease away. 
check for any cutting or anything, any cuts, any pieces of rubber. I use my excess grease and put on these O-rings. Go ahead and remove the piston. And as you can see, that's still deformed in one side where it was down on the bottom. So I'll rotate it, put that lump towards the top, put that back in there, snug it back down again. Now once that's done, remove it and now our seal is good to go so we'll take put our piston back on with this chamfer towards the top take a little bit of 121 thread locker whoa that came out excessively quick uh, so we'll wipe some of that away this was a 15 16th nut we'll go ahead and put that back on and we'll take and we'll tighten our piston nut back down Piston nuts tight, so we'll take, put some grease on the piston seal. We ball that back down again. We'll remove the rod, set that to the side, and grab our tube, put it back up here. And what I like to do is pull the gland back a little, and then we'll take the piston, insert it in the tube while pushing and holding pressure, walking in up to the gland and just turn it in. Turn it in as far as we can by hand. And then once we get it so far, we'll take our spanner and just continue to tighten until we're all the way. Okay, this set here was a Williams 482, uh, which actually has fuller pins than what my other set did, but I use that to finish tightening. Make sure it's all the way tight and push that back in. And that cylinder's done. So if you got anything out of that, if you would, like I said, consider go down there, clicking that subscribe, turning the bell on for notifications, and giving this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know down there in the comments anything you would like to see or anything else uh, as it comes through the door. I'll try my best to do a video on it. Till next time, thanks for watching.